Hi, everybody. So um, in our work to find the solution to the least squares problem, we eventually reduced the problem to a matrix equation. And to solve that matrix equation, we needed to convert the compute the inverse of a matrix D. And uh, as long as we could find the inverse of D, uh, we had a nice formula for the solution to the least squares problem. Uh, but what if the matrix D doesn't have an inverse? And what does it mean to say that it doesn't have an inverse or that it does? In other words, what are the conditions under which our solution actually works? That's the uh, topic which we're going to take up in this uh, brief discussion. So um, let's just recap. We have our data matrix X, which has n rows, k plus 1 columns. And its last column is all ones. And we have our target vector y. And we're trying to find m, which is a k plus 1 by 1 vector, so that xm is as close to y as possible as possible and we found that the solution to that is given by the following equation or in other words when x transpose y equals x transpose x m. And if we set D to be the matrix x transpose x, then our solution is given by m equals D inverse x transpose y, provided D is an invertible matrix. So just to remind you here, D here is a k plus 1 by k plus 1 matrix. And let's remember from linear algebra that D is invertible if and only if the kernel of D equals 0, which is to say if and only if when D v equals 0 for some vector v, we have v equals 0. So um, that's our criteria for invertibility. Namely, we need to know that um, if v is a non-zero vector, then dv is not 0. That's another way to put this. So um, our proposition here is going to be that D is invertible if and only if the columns of X are linearly independent. And if you remember, the span of the columns of x is, uh, so the, the columns of x are in Rn plus 1. Sorry, Rn, there, uh, because remember, x has n rows and k plus 1 columns. And there are k plus 1 columns. So in other words, this is another way of saying that the column space of x has dimension k plus 1. And the column dimension, this is another terminology from linear algebra, is equal to k plus 1. In other words, the, the, the subspace of Rn spanned by the columns of x, by the k plus 1 columns of x, actually has dimension k plus 1. And uh, just to compare this with the two-dimensional case, our very first example, 
You remember then that the, the matrix X looks like X1 down to Xn, 1 down to 1. So the, so the columns are linearly independent. Well, maybe a better way to put it is that to say that the columns are dependent, are linearly dependent, is to say that x1 down to xn is equal to a constant vector. And we saw already in the case of the uh, uh, of the two-dimensional situation that when the, if all the x's are the same, then um, there's no way that the least squares problem can work anyway. Um, in the higher dimensional case, this condition um, to say that the column dimension of x is k plus 1, this is, means that the features are independent. And in other words, you can't, let's say you're, you're measuring, you're trying to relate miles per gallon to a bunch of variables related to the car. Um, you wouldn't want to pick two features which are, let's say, multiples of one another. You wouldn't want to use uh, the displacement in cubic centimeters and the displacement in cubic inches uh, as different features because um, then, uh, you know, uh, the two things change together and you couldn't have independent slopes for the two different uh, variables. They're really the same variable. And so that's what causes, if that happens, if you, if, if what, if you choose a feature which is actually just a sum or a weighted sum of other features, then you can't solve the least squares problem, at least with those features. And what you have to do is, I mean, if this happens, then you can throw away the features are redundant and you can throw some away and still solve the problem. So um, it's, it's a reasonable thing to ask that the features that you're using are, are linearly independent of one another, just like in the two-dimensional case. Okay, let's prove our, our proposition here. Um, so let's first suppose that um, that the columns of x are dependent. That means that we can write, I'm going to use this notation, this is the first column of x. This is the second column of x. And there are k plus 1 columns all together. But not all, so we can write a linear combination of the uh, columns of x, which sum to 0, even though the coefficients are not 0. But this equation is the same thing as saying that x times the vector m1 down to mk plus 1 is 0. And if that's the case, then you can multiply that equation by x transpose. And that tells us that this is d here, that d times m1 down to mk plus 1 is 0. And so we see that the kernel of d contains a non-zero vector. So therefore, d is not invertible. So what about the other direction? Um, Suppose, so, I mean, just to recap here, remember that our condition for invertibility that said that D is invertible if and only if whenever DV 
when v is a non-zero vector, dv is not zero. So I just showed that, that we have a non-zero vector for which dv is zero, and that means that d is not invertible. Uh, what about the other direction? Suppose d is not invertible. Then there is a vector m which is not equal to zero so that dm equals zero. Well, remember what d is. d is x transpose xm equals zero. And we have to make sense of this. So first of all, notice by the same argument that I just made a little while ago, xm is an element of the column space of x. It's the sum of, it's a linear combination, just like here, of the columns of x. So xm belongs to the column space of x. Now, when you multiply x, x transpose times xm, this is a k plus 1 by 1 vector. And what are its entries? Well, it's, this, is, this is an n by 1 vector, and this is a k plus 1 by n matrix. And the entries of x transpose xm are the dot products of the rows of x transpose with the vector xm. And the rows of x transpose are the columns of x. So if x transpose xm equals 0, this means that the vector xm is perpendicular to or orthogonal to the column, all the columns of x. And therefore, I mean, if you take a vector v which is in the column space of x, so that it can be written as a sum of, let's write it out this way, v1, v1, x1, plus v2, x2, plus vk plus 1, x, k plus 1, then the dot product of xm with v is the sum of vi times the dot product of xm with the columns of x. And that's zero because all of those dot products are zero. So this tells us actually that, that the vector xm is orthogonal to the column space of x. But it's also an element of the column space of x. And it's a theorem from linear algebra, which we might prove later on in the course, or maybe you remember it, that if a vector v is in an element, uh, is in a subspace of a vector space, and v is also perpendicular to every element of that subspace, then v is 0. And this kind of makes sense. I mean, how can you be both, if you're in a certain plane, the only way you can be in a plane and perpendicular to everything in that plane is if you're 0. Because if you're perpendicular to everything in the plane, you have to stick out of the plane. Uh, but if you are in the plane and you stick out of the plane, you have to be zero.
So all of this put together tells us that if we started with the assumption that um, x transpose xm equals 0, we concluded that xm equals 0. And that tells us that the column space of x has dimension less than k plus 1, or the columns of x are linearly independent. So uh, that finishes the proof that says that basic that the, linear, the least squares problem is solvable if and only if the features are linearly independent.